What is in our lungs? If this is on the lamppost, then what's in our lungs and inside our bodies? Nobody knows. Radinac is a small village near Belgrade. A lot of people die here. Their pictures on lampposts covered with red dust. Dragana Milic would love to leave her village, she tells me. But no one wants to buy her house. It too is covered in thick red dust emitted from the steel mill right across from her home. Look over there, see how much smoke there is? What used to be home to more than 5,000 people a decade ago is now increasingly dotted with empty homes. Young people in particular are turning their backs on the village in search of better paid jobs. That steel mill is one of Serbia's oldest industrial facilities, commonly referred to as the pride of Serbia. It provides thousands of jobs in the region and has had various owners, from the Serbian state to US-owned, back to a Serbian plant in 2012. Since 2016, it's a Chinese state-owned enterprise. What has allegedly changed here since China took over? It's difficult to speak to locals here on camera. They are afraid, they tell us. This couple, too, doesn't want to be recognized. Their children work for the Serbian government, ironically, in the health sector, they say. But they want us to film this photo. They took off what appears to be a gigantic dirty cloud above the factory. Sometimes we hear explosions. Earplugs against the noise. That's all they can do, they say. They're just waiting for people to die. Even before the Chinese got involved here, there was criticism against the steel plant. According to data from the regional hospital in Smederevo, cancer rates have quadrupled here during the past decade. Environmental activists like Nikola Kristic want the plants to be cleaned up and are demanding filters against pollution. He's the head of a watchdog in Smederevo. Nikola goes door to door to find out how people are affected. Do you have an issue with the dust? Of course I do, and the water is not good. Everyone here has a story to share about the plant. And Nikola wants to listen and gather as much evidence as possible, he says. I've had two big tumors in two years. Do you have hope that things will get better? The situation is very concerning. My wife wants us to move away from here, not only because of her, but also for the future of our children. We have three children, and things aren't getting better. We don't see that changing soon. Activists, including Nikola, say that change is difficult, in part due to the Serbian state allegedly not being willing to enforce environmental standards. People who work in the steel plant are concerned about losing their jobs. This is a paradox here, because for one, you have people who depend on the plant for their livelihoods. And there's also an emotional component, because the plant has been there for generations. But on the other hand, that same factory kills them, poisons them every day. Other environmental organizations share this assessment. But for many who live here, the Smedarovo steel plant seems the only option in an already impoverished part of Serbia.
Having a job is more important than the environment. I am personally more concerned that people do not lose their jobs, and this pollution isn't affecting us. The Chinese and the Serbian flag are seen when approaching the steel plant, operated by HBIS, the Chinese investor. We have asked for permission to film inside, but our request was left unanswered. We want to try again. Cameras are not welcome. We managed to film nonetheless. What follows is a bizarre conversation with the public relations representative against the backdrop of a sign promoting environmental policies. So I should go to China and request an interview to talk to someone here in Serbia. That's the normal procedure. We receive another email address and make another request, but once again, no reaction. Our next stop, Belgrade, the capital. We want to find out whether inspections are being carried out by the Serbian state. Our written requests to the health ministry and the environmental ministry remain unanswered. Our follow-ups via phone without any result. Instead, we meet Milenko Jovanovic in Belgrade's forest. In 2021, he gathered dust samples from the steel plant for the National Ecological Association, an NGO he founded, to identify environmental problems and make them public. His findings? Arsen. Arsenic, cadmium, chrome, lead, mercury, nickel. These things should not be present in the air at all. They are toxic materials, heavy metals that cause cancer, and they shouldn't be there. He says those who put profit before health of the people should be sanctioned. He's calling on the Serbian government. The state should act. The factory is under the control of the state. We need transparency for the citizens. Tell them where the problem is, why and where incidents happen, and how to protect themselves. We need adequate filters. They must work and keep working. Back in Radinac, Dragana Milic sets all her hope on environmental activists who told her they will bring the case to the European Court of Human Rights. She says everyone here knows what's wrong. But people who oppose inspections don't want to understand. Nobody wants to close the plant, but stop the toxic waste poisoning the village. The struggle is taking a toll on her. It's exhausting, she says. Her dream is simple. Honestly, I would love to retire and spend the rest of my life with my grandchildren. That is my only wish. Her grandchildren rarely come. It's not safe to touch anything here or play outside, Dragana says. A life increasingly constrained to be spent inside her four walls.